I want to say good evening to everybody. Good evening, Brother Danny. And uh, welcome everybody here to the Lord's Passover. Okay, we get, we get ready to have Bible class here, you all. So just settle down, everybody. Settle down. And uh, hopefully everybody can find a seat. So if you got if you got coats sitting in your seat, you we got a coat right back there. You gotta can't let the coat occupy a seat. So okay, uh, we are going to get started here. Welcome everybody here to the Lord's Passover, and that is that is what it is. It is the Lord's Passover. I know most people when you talk about Passover and all the God's holy days. Most people say they are for the Jews, but that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that these are the feasts of the Lord. We're going to read that in just a little while. We're going to start out reading that. So if you don't learn anything else before you leave here this evening, at least know that what we are doing here, it was ordained by God. It didn't have nothing to do with Moses. It didn't have nothing to do with the Jews. It was all about the Lord. That's what it was really all about. And it's really all about God's salvation for man. Because all of these days points toward God's salvation for man. And we are going to show you in just a little bit what this one is really all about. As always, when, when I uh, do a lesson on the high days, I always start out in Leviticus chapter 23. And that's where we are going to start. We are going to start in Leviticus chapter 23. And we'll just begin by showing you who ordained this, this day anyway. We'll begin reading at Leviticus chapter 23 and we'll begin at verse 1. Leviticus 23 and we'll start reading at verse 1. 23 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read, bro. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Now notice, right away, it is the Lord that is speaking unto Moses, and he is telling Moses what to tell the people. Because, you know, sometimes when you start dealing with these days, people want to uh, call it the law of Moses. Well, right away, we find out here that it is the Lord that is speaking unto Moses, and he is telling Moses what to tell the people. Go ahead and continue reading. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Now he says speak unto the children of Israel. But what he said to the children of Israel it applies to everybody. And notice what he said. Uh, these are the feasts of the Lord concerning the feast of the Lord. Not concerning the feast of the Jews, but concerning the feast of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Uh-huh. Even these are my feasts. Now, the Lord said, you shall proclaim them to be holy convocation, meaning that you are commanded to have a gathering on these days. And this is why we're here. You know, we're here by commandment. We're not here just because we decided we wanted to do something. God gave the commandment, and the only thing we decided was that we were going to obey the commandment. Amen. Now, the Lord said, you shall have a holy convocation on these days. Go ahead and read on. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. And that did not change, people, in spite of what they tell you. I know they tell you, you know, it all changed, and now it's the first day of the week. No, it didn't. It did not change. God did not change it. Therefore, it is etched in stone. Unless he changed it, it stays the same. And he did not change it. You cannot read it anywhere in the Bible. I know people tell you that, you know, Seventh day is not the Sabbath day anymore. Now it's the first day of the week. No, it's not. It is the seal. It is still the seventh day. That is the commandment that God gave, and He did not change it. Therefore, it is still good. Go ahead and read on. These are the feasts of the Lord. Again, He said it. These are the feasts of the Lord. He's saying it over and over again. He's trying to drive a point home here that these are the. This is what God's saying that these are His feasts, not Moses. Mm -hmm. God is saying these are the feasts of the Lord. So whose feasts are these? The they are the feasts of the Lord. Go ahead and read on. Even holy convocations, uh -huh. which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. And he said you shall proclaim them in their seasons. 
Lord have them all listed here in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus, but we only going to deal with the one that is in season. Read that next verse. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Now he's saying the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And it is the this is the 14th day of the first month, according to God's calendar. God calculates time different from what man does. You know, God's year begins around this time of the year. And so this would be the 14th day of the first month. And notice what it said. It is the Lord's Passover. That's whose Passover it is. Not the Jews' Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, let's go, uh, let's go and, uh, and deal with this Passover. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. Exodus 12. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. We're going to go back and pick up when the Passover was instituted. We're going to get over into the New Testament. This is not an Old Testament thing. People. We're going to get into the New Testament. First, we're going to go back and deal with when this Passover was instituted. First, I needed you to understand whose Passover this is. You need to understand that. Then you need to understand when this Passover was instituted, how it was done. Then you'll be able to understand better what this Passover is really all about today. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 12. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. Exodus 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Now this is when the Lord uh, delivered Israel out of bondage. Israel was in bondage down in Egypt. And the Lord had poured out ten plagues on the Egyptians. This was the tenth one. Lord said, when I pour out this plague on them, they're going to let you go then. Now, I'll pick it up at Exodus uh, chapter 12 and begin reading at verse 1. 12 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying. Now notice, it is always the Lord that is speaking unto Moses and telling Moses what to do. It is never Moses deciding on him of himself what he is to do. But it is always the Lord speaking unto Moses. And he spoke unto Moses, saying. Go ahead and read. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Uh -huh. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And this is the first month of the year. You know, God, as I said earlier, God calculates time different. You know, he even started his days different. The day just started, according to God's time, at the going down of the sun, when you can see a change. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yep. You know, if you do things by man's calendar, it don't make a lot of sense. Man's day started at 1201. You don't see no change. If you ain't got a watch or a clock or something, you don't know it's a different day. Mm -hmm. But when the sun go down, you see a change, don't you? That's right. Therefore, you know you have gone from one day to another. And God starts his year different as well. He started during the time what we call spring, when you can start to see a change. You've been looking at winter for the last three, four months, right? Now everything's starting to balloon, bloom, brother, and now you are seeing a change, aren't you? And let you know you are going from one thing to another. You, are, you have just left the old year and you've just come into a new year. So now this month is the beginning of months to you. Go ahead and read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, uh -huh. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, uh -huh. according to the house of their father, Go ahead. a lamb for a house. Uh -huh. And if the household be too little for the lamb, Go ahead. let him and his neighbor next unto his house. Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Go ahead and read. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Now you had to take this lamb. Go ahead and finish that verse. A male of the first year. Now this lamb had to be a male of the first year. And the lamb had to be without blemish, it said, didn't it? That's right. Go ahead and read. You shall take it out from the sheep. Or from the goats. Uh -huh. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Now where's the 14th day of the month? That is the Passover, isn't it? Right. So now this lamb had to be taken on the 10th day. Then it had to be put up till the 14th day. Go ahead and read on. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now when, when did that lamb? The lamb couldn't die on his own. lamb had to be killed. Had to be killed on the 14th day, yeah. on the Passover day. Right. Not some other day. It had to be killed on 